Good evening. Welcome to our St. John's Parish family on this third Sunday of Easter. A special welcome to all who are visiting with us. At this Mass, we celebrate First Communion of some of our parishioners. We welcome their families who have joined us to celebrate. At this Mass, we remember in a special way Simone Sposari. Just a reminder that if you'd like to follow along with our worship aid online, you can do so on your cell phone by visiting www.stjohnhillsdale.org. I invite you all to please stand and give a sign of welcome to those around you. Please join me in singing our opening song, here I am, Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. My dear friends, welcome for this third Sunday of Easter, and welcome to those that are also joining us remotely. And in a very special way, today we welcome seven of our youngest parishioners. So easily recognizable, they stand out. Alyssa, William, Audrey, Logan, Joshua, Justin, and Marcos will be receiving for the first time the sacrament of Holy Communion. They will be receiving our Lord Jesus Christ into their hearts. They will be establishing a friendship with Jesus unlike any other. Today, he will become their best friend, and they will be his best friend. And therefore, we support you, Alyssa, William, Audrey, Logan, Joshua, Justin, and Marcos, with our prayers. And we're so happy that you will join us to receive our Lord Jesus at this Mass, and then at every Mass following this one. But before we begin, to celebrate the mysteries of this Mass before we begin to receive our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament of the Eucharist, we first acknowledge our sins. We recognize our shortcomings. We ask for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, Forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the captain and the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not? To stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostle said in reply, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The Sanhedrin ordered the apostles to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. The word of the Lord.
reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked and heard the voices of many angels who surrounded the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They were countless in number and they cried out in a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches wisdom and strength, honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, everything in the universe cry out to the one who sits on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor, glory and might forever and ever. The four living creatures answered, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. The word of the Lord. with you and with your spirit A reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you o lord at that time jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the sea of tiberias he revealed himself in this way together were simon peter thomas called didymus nathaniel from cana in galilee Zebedee's sons and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast your net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it, and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. 
Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they realized that it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner, the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying what, what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask the young people present here in church to participate in this homily, to answer a few questions, to raise your hand. First of all, have you ever told your parents that you're hungry? Raise your hand if you ever told your parents, mom, dad, I'm hungry. Raise your hand if your parents said, well, go to the fridge and find something to eat. And now here comes the very important, honest question. How many of you have gone to the fridge, opened it up, closed it, and told your mom or dad, there's nothing there to eat? Look at all those hands going up, all the parents know. And it's usually after you just went shopping and spent about $200 on groceries and the fridge is stuffed with food and there's nothing to eat it. Well, the reality is that what happens afterwards is your mom or dad goes into the fridge, takes something out and makes something for you to eat, puts on a plate and says, here you go, eat. Something similar happened to today's gospel. But unlike the convenience of modern refrigeration, back then the apostles had a real true problem. They couldn't just open up the fridge and find food to eat. They literally had to go out on a boat and go fishing for food. And they were professional fishermen. That was their job. 
That was what they were experts in. And what they fished, they ate. And if they didn't catch any fish, well, they didn't eat anything. This time around, they had a truly major problem. They really didn't catch anything. All night fishing and caught nothing. No breakfast. And nothing in the fridge. That's a problem. As they're about to give up and say, well, I guess we're not having breakfast this morning. They see a man on the shore who they don't really recognize. And that man says, have you caught anything? And they sadly say, no, I caught nothing. There's nothing to eat. And just as our parents will say, go look in the fridge once again and you'll find something. This man who they soon recognize as Jesus says to them, give it one more chance. Throw your nets into the water. You'll catch something. And they catch not one fish, not two fish, not five fish, not ten fish. They catch 153 fish. More than they could possibly eat. More than they could even drag onto the boat and sell in the market. Just as when your parents open up the fridge and there's stuff falling out because that's how much food there actually is in the fridge. When Jesus says, give it one more chance, they catch so many fish that the nets are tearing and they're about to capsize. What does today's gospel represent for us? It represents the beautiful sacrament that Alyssa, William, Audrey, Logan, Joshua, Justin, and Marcos will receive for the first time. And the rest of us, their parents, their grandparents, aunts, uncles, godparents, and all of us present will receive once again. That spiritual food. That food which is the body and blood of Jesus. Jesus himself, the Eucharist, Holy Communion, the Blessed Sacrament, as we call it. And just as we constantly have to eat, constantly look into the fridge over and over again for food because we're hungry, so too we constantly have to come back to Mass to receive that spiritual food, that spiritual food of the Eucharist, because we also hunger for Jesus. No matter whether we're eight years old or 80 years old, we need Jesus. We need to receive Holy Communion to satisfy that hunger that we have. It is so touching when I see very, very young children, toddlers, with their parents, barely able to walk, and as their parents receive Holy Communion, the little toddlers are raising their hands. They want it too. I want what mommy has, what daddy has. They're hungering for the body of Christ. And I'm sure Alyssa, William, Audrey, Logan, Joshua, Justin, and Marcos, you did that. You did that when you were younger. When your parents brought you to church, you would say, why can't I have that? You look at mom, perhaps even cry and say, I wanted that. You got it, not me. Well, today's the day where you get it. You get what mom and dad receives, what everyone else receives. You receive Jesus Christ. 
and how beautiful it is that you receive him. The sacraments satisfy our spiritual needs. They parallel our physical needs. St. Thomas Aquinas says that we have seven basic physical needs and seven basic spiritual needs. Our dear young first holy communicants have received after today three of those sacraments. The rest of us hopefully have received even more of those sacraments. So let's look back. Let's rewind the videotape of our lives to the very beginning. The most important physical need of ours, without which nothing else is possible, is the need to live, to be born. It's one of our inalienable rights in the United States. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. If I'm not alive, nothing else matters. It all starts with our birthday. The day we were born. The day where our lives started and everything else started. And parallel to that physical need of life is the spiritual need of spiritual life. The spiritual need of baptism, the water of baptism. And just as we need a mom and a dad to care for us, so too we need our Heavenly Father and Holy Mother Church to take care of us. For many of you, my dear children, you were baptized right here in this font on your right hand side and this house of God is your home it's your second home and feel at home because just as you have a physical home you have a spiritual home just as you have physical mom and dad you have a you have a spiritual mom and dad just as you have a physical life, you have a spiritual life. And in today's gospel, we see that emphasized by Peter and the apostles being on water in the Sea of Galilee. It reminds them of their baptism. Then, only a few weeks ago, back in January, our dear young friends received for the first time the Sacrament of Reconciliation, their second sacrament. The Sacrament of Confession, as it's also known, or Penance. And again, we have the mirror between a physical need and a spiritual need. The physical need is to say sorry to mom and dad, to our brother and sister, to our friend or classmate or our teacher, or anyone else when something doesn't go right. That's one of the first lessons that mom and dad teach us. They say, no, that's wrong. You shouldn't do that. What do you say? I'm sorry. One of the first and most important lessons that we learn in life. And just as we say sorry to anyone that we hurt, we say sorry to God. Because when we hurt someone else with our words or our actions, we hurt God with our words and our actions. So yes, sorry Bobby, sorry Susie, sorry Jesus. That physical and spiritual need parallel. And then today, we receive Holy Communion. And that reminds us of the need to eat and drink. One of the favorite things that every one of us loves to do, to eat and drink. We all have our favorite food. We all have our favorite beverage. 
And it's not enough just to eat our favorite food once and that's it. We don't get tired of it. We want it more and more. How many times we hear our young people say, can I have pizza every day? Can I have spaghetti and meatballs every day? I want it all the time. Well, just as we want physical food all the time, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, just as we want ice cream or cookies every day, so too spiritually, we need to be nourished. We need to be fed by Jesus himself. And we need that on a regular basis. So even though we make a big deal about our first Holy Communion, every Holy Communion is as important as the first one. I remember very well when I received my first Holy Communion, when I was eight years old, April 25th, 1998, 24 years ago. What a beautiful day that was for me to receive Jesus for the first time. But ever since, in the last 24 years, how many times have I received Jesus in Holy Communion? Just doing simple math, about 3,000 times. About 3,000 times have I received our Lord Jesus, the spiritual food. And you might say, that is impossible. How could you have received Holy Communion 3,000 times? Well, think about how many times have you eaten dinner? I'm sure it's probably at least several hundred times for our young people and probably several thousand times for our adults. So the same way we need to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, the same way we need the Mass to feed us spiritually. And therefore, Alyssa, William, Audrey, Logan, Joshua, Justin, and Marcos, Keep coming back. Keep coming back to receive the Eucharist. Keep coming back to receive this meal. Because it's as important a meal here as it is at home. We need that spiritual food that is Jesus Christ himself. And you'll see that in the years to come, Things will be even more exciting for you in your friendship with Jesus, in your time spent with Jesus. Because today is the beginning where you and Jesus become best friends. And just as you want to eat your favorite food with your favorite friends, share this meal of Holy Communion with Jesus, who gives himself to you at this Mass and every Mass you, your parents, and every one of us attends. May we now rise and profess our faith in God, the faith that we were baptized with, as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We turn our hearts and minds to Jesus. As he feeds his disciples, so he also feeds us with himself. Our response today is, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. That Pope Francis and all the shepherds within the church may take Jesus' command to heart and feed the flock with patient understanding and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. That local, national, and world leaders may work for an equitable distribution of resources, so to anger, end hunger, poverty, and war, especially in the Ukraine. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. That all our children receiving Eucharist for the first time and their families be supported in their growth in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. That all humanity may work together to protect water and natural resources and to keep them clean. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. That all who feel hopeless or alone in their struggles, that they may know the boundless love of God, let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are sick, physically, emotionally, and mentally, may feel the healing hand of Jesus, especially Jim Lyons, let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord's salvation will give everlasting joy to those who have died, especially Claire Pytel, Margaret Hayde, Victoria Ryan, Margaret Riley, Reverend Tom Wisniewski, George Itore, and Richard Stefanacci Sr. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. And for Simone Sposari, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, our needs are no surprise to you, yet we raise them as we strive to grow in relationship with you. Hear these prayers we offer today and answer them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray. My dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit and perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us in the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst and we are gathered by his love. And when as ones for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Father, 
as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom we have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. We are partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father. Give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son. Confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known, especially Simone Sposari, for whom this Mass is offered. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to you, to an eternal dwelling place, and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and martyrs, with St. John the Baptist, our patron saint of our parish, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. ordinary bread and this ordinary wine have become the body and blood of Jesus. He is present with us. We will receive him in a few minutes. But first, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, that our parents, grandparents taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you ate the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace.
My dear friends, behold the Lamb of God, behold Jesus Christ, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul.
Let us rise and let us pray. Look with kindness on your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Just a word of thank you to each and every one of us present here today. These Masses are usually longer, but they have a beautiful spiritual dynamic when we rekindle the memories of our first Holy Communion. And congratulations to our children and our families. I think we can give you a round of applause. came up because I wanted to give you just very brief update on a very important uh, situation in our parish and that is regarding the uh, area of the brook and the back parking lot. Uh, this is going to be a very short version of what happened over the last couple of weeks but with the uh, erosion of the brook and uh, some debris that is still there from the time of the Hurricane Ida uh, that brook is filled with uh, a lot of lot of issues. Some of the trees did not make it through the winter season and we'll have to urgently remove them just to keep that area of the back parking lot safe. So in all transparency, I just wanted to inform you what will happen over the next couple of weeks. We'll bring the tree removal company this week and we'll have to remove some of the trees that now tilted and may be a danger. Uh, and then, I would like to put together a committee, a working group of, of parishioners of all different professions who know something about this, and then we'll engage also the authorities of the borough and some state authorities we need, and we'll have to urgently address the situation regarding the uh, continual erosion of the brook and the back parking site area there which uh, is perceived by many people as a public park. People go there, pass throughout the day, but it's not uh, exactly the safest place to be. So God bless you. Thanks for all you do, and thanks for all of your wonderful support, and we'll keep you informed about other developments. God bless. And my dear friends, Alyssa, William, Audrey, Logan, Joshua, Justin, and Marcos, you are now best friends with Jesus. You received him for First Holy Communion. But just as you wouldn't be satisfied eating ice cream only once in your life, or only eating ice cream twice a year, uh, so too with Holy Communion. It's not enough just to receive it once. Not enough just to receive it for the first time. If there's a first, it means that there's a second, there's a third, and eventually you gotta catch up to me and do 3,000. That's the goal, and it starts today. So I'm so happy that you have your first Holy Communion, and I can't wait to, to see you for your second, third, fourth, fifth, tenth, hundredth, five hundredth Holy Communion uh, as you continue to grow in your friendship with Jesus. And now I offer you, your families, loved ones, everyone present here today, as well as joining us from home, a solemn blessing. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of His only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by His blessing. Amen. May He, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go so, and announce the gospel with your lives. Thanks be to God. <laughs>